Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Get Geek Podcast, where we celebrate geek, nerd, and pop culture. Each week, we deliver the best analysis for fans, by fans, on anything related to movies, TV, video games, comics, anime, and manga. We talk geek. And now, here's the Get Geek Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cross Gen Podcast. Oh, wait a second. And it's, the yeah. Get Geek Podcast. This is a collab, guys. Um, we're this this topic is so big that we have to bring the two podcasts together. And everybody um, in the conversation is here today. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. yeah we got the whole everybody. crew. Yep. So guys, um, my name is Walt. We have Gabe. Jose, AJ, and Eli. Guys, please say hello. Goodbye. <laughs> what a do. Au revoir. <laughs> All right. So um we did mention what we were well what we did mention that the the topic is huge. We didn't mention what the topic is. Um, do we want to do a musical intro to this <laughs> dude oh, wow. the man we definitely should have probably rehearsed it if we were gonna do it yeah it, it just came up on the fly right, right. here <laughs> 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 are so <laughs> off <laughs> No. Oh, the baritone. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway. <laughs> that was bad. We, we tried. We tried. Right. Halo. Yeah. Not the game. No, no, not at all. Paramount Plus put out a brand new show, a show that's what? 20 years in the making? Well, actually, they did announce it back in 2013 that they were going to start production on it. And um, right. but nothing t- ever happened because but 343, it's technically- yeah, 343 was kind of like saying, well, we're going to work on it once we get the story right. Right? That, right, that was right. Their thing. Yeah, that because was their 343 thing. Studios all produced it, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, but... It's been in development even longer than that because oh, yeah, absolutely. And at a time like Universal had it, Peter Jackson had it. He yep. was an executive produ- producer. The guy um, from had, District Nine had it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Neil Blomkamp. He had mm-hmm. it. I think actually, I think that he 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 really kind of did it well. Did you guys ever see his uh, shorts? Absolutely. Yeah. I think Dude. he was pissed off that he didn't get to do it. Right. Well, the reason District Nine so actually much, so much well, work. Yeah, it. the reason D- District Nine came about is because they canceled his halo project so he had all these materials and the settings and all that and he was like what am i gonna do with this yeah you Mm -hmm. know yeah yeah and he turned it into a great movie i love district nine so i would have loved to have seen that i saw that short it was really cool really gritty yeah like realistic kind of like parts of district nine but like i love the levity and the silliness in district nine also and i think that would have played well in halo but we got this yes we gotta talk about this Yes. This. So how are we going to talk about this? Are we going to do like a round table? Are we going to take turns? I, I need to I need to prepare how I'm going to talk about Halo <laughs> because I think, you know, if if anybody that's listening uh, has been paying attention to anything online, this first episode has created a lot of division. I see yes and definitely (laughs) feel i haven't looked at the social media yet but i was going to say the format of this podcast should be like social media comment boards we should just scream our oh no (laughs) oh lord no (laughs) absolutely (laughs) not yeah (laughs) just kind of no um oh man Uh, maybe we should just like kind of do what we what we sort of always do and talk about it in terms of characters and like Cinematography well, and action and setting and all that stuff. Well, or well, well, well. Let's we have do like to a quick. Let's different. let's do like a quick so that we can get right into the review. I say that we should go around the table and just go, yay or nay on the first episode, hmm. each person, and then go just a yay or nay, just a yay or nay, just a yay or nay. Is there and then we're going is to is there anything in between? That's the conversation. Meh. That's the conversation. Is, is, is that a, a, a yana? A yana, maybe. Meh. 
<laughs> meh. 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 Oh, meh. Oh, meh yeah. is meh. the perfect yay or nay. Like in okay. between yay or nay, right? Okay. If you think about it. Okay. That works. Jose? Meh. Meh? Meh. Walt? Meh. Eli? No. No. AJ? Nay. It's nay. Nay. No. <laughs> AJ? Yeah, meh. It's yay. Me? What? Nay. nay. A very, very deep nay. I Absolutely know your your nay. nay is 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 super deep. We're talking about me and Eli might have might out of all the episodes we've ever done, we might be in whole agreement for the first time ever. <laughs> I think so too. We're, oh talk, we're talking the trench of nays when it comes to Gabe, from what I from what you and I have been talking about lately. So. But we'll we'll get into that later. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll let you guys. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. I'm, like, go ahead and get started while I gather my thoughts. Because when I start, it's gonna be uh, I'm gonna empty the clip. Well, we didn't get so a yay. Oh. Forty five minutes later, right? We got a yay. We got a yay. Man, we got a yay. Man. Well, that's the same as man, right? Or what's a yay? Man, is that a, uh, that's, it's a, a, that's a little bit more than a that's man. That's cheating that's, a little that's bit. That's man. That's man. That's like a man plus. That's that. See, that's that's. I can right. tell that he's yeah. an independent voter. You added your own, yeah. You added your own grade <laughs> yeah. to that one, but I guess we'll allow it. Um, he's he's doing either a med plus or a yay minus, right? Yeah. If we're going academic terms. Wow. Uh, I'll start with this. I love Pablo Schreiber. I do. So do I. And that hasn't really mm. changed here, even even in spite of of any other meh, because my mm-hmm. opinion is meh. In spite of any other opinions that i have about the show or the storyline as heavily as they've changed it from the games right because i'm not like the the purist that some of y'all are in terms of halo i haven't played uh five uh and i haven't played reach so i've played as far as three um and i don't remember a lot of the storyline if i'm being honest it's been a long time since i played the games but i can already tell there's some huge changes in the storyline which i mean i there's some things that i really really enjoyed about it um, which is why it's a meh for me. Uh, I guess like maybe, maybe can, can we like say if there's anything we enjoyed about it real quick, unless the, the, the deep nay should we, has nothing we, to be enjoyed about it. Should we drop the spoiler curtain? Yeah. Yeah, we should. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we definitely sure. should. Just, well, just, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. just to yeah. let everybody know that, Hey, we're going to be spoiler, spoilerific from this mm-hmm. point on spoilers so, yes so be prepared spoilers uh yeah 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 spoilers this and 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 of all spoilers this show this episode was the biggest spoiler in the history of all video game adaptations of anything ever <clears throat> so proceed proceed i think proceed i know where you're, where you're going technically <laughs> it's yeah. not but how aj it's been 20 years Technically, it's not, if, if if you're talking about what I think you're talking about. Absolutely. Technically, it's yes, not a spoiler. We are. <sighs> okay. Technically, it's not. Let, let, okay. Let's let Jose chime I'll start. in, and then we'll, I'll start. we'll get back. To, we'll yeah. get back into it. I'll start because maybe maybe we should start happy and go to to sad by the going end. Going to the depths episode. of Mordor. Yeah, go into like. <laughs> Well, 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 it'll be like that episode where you told us about that that freaking movie that depressed all of us. I can't remember right now. The horse movie you ever saw. Uh, oh. Postal, I think Postal. it was. Yes, that was bad. Let's start with the happy. I thought the action scenes were good. I thought some of the action scenes were good. Uh, I'm, I'm cautiously uh, happy about the fact that they decided to make the show like a little violent and like have there be you know, some consequences to getting shot by laser beams and like being sliced by like energy blades and all that. I'm talking about like early in the episode when they show, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, those characters who are, I guess they're establishing as a side characters. Um, I can't recall her name. So that's kind of, I was meh, right? Quan. Quan. Quan, yeah. Quan Quan Ha, right? Quan Ha, who's like the main other non-Master Chief character, it seems. Uh, When they slaughtered that whole village, essentially people were, exploding from laser blasts and all of that that was kind of cool that was very like district nine that's kind of what i liked about the the silliness of district nine when i talked about that it's like gears of war ish it's like a video game a little bit um but the action scenes i thought were cool like when all of the spartans showed up and started kicking butt and kicking ass on you know all the covenant like i thought that that was really really it was really cool like they found a way to take master chief in the games who like if you if you take Master Chief's movement and his action in the games and turn that into something cinematic, it would be clunky and weird. But they made him, you know, 
fluid and skilled. They made them all like excellent hand to hand combat fighters. And there were some cool, cool parts where they like disarmed the covenant. I mean, in the games, right? Like, you you know, it's just a consequence of it being a video game, right? That's just mm-hmm. the way that he moves. And like, I like the way that they made him. He's still a, a tank, like he's supposed to be in the games, but they also move in a way that allows them to, you know, take out all these aliens that are shooting at them. Um, so that was cool. I like the moments where they like paid those, those really on the nose homages to the game, like the yes. sound of the charging of the shields, uh, the first person moments that they had just like a couple of times, which makes sense in the context of the story. So it wasn't, like kind of too too weird and too on the nose i guess um but that's like one of the things or a couple of things that i liked about it um what about y'all is there anything that y'all liked about it that isn't some of the things that i named or is that all that's good about the show and we're just gonna well, murder it from here on out i guess i'll jump in um i i kind of echo some of the stuff that you talked about in terms of um you know the things that i liked about the show um the first episode I like those little, like you said, homages to the game. Um, there was one particular point that I nearly fell out of my my chair because there was an elite that did like that that little, you know, sidestep that you see kind of yeah. in the game. You know, um, I thought that was that was pretty neat when they sidestep the grenades or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just like, oh, that's directly from the game. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So I I like that they they did that. You heard the um you know, the shield regenerating and yeah. stuff like that. So they had those little the bits and services. pieces. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. All these little things that kind of brought you into the video game. Um, I am i don't agree with the violence a little bit because mm-hmm. I think the violence, that's not something that Halo is known for, you know, um, and it's a little over the top in my opinion, mm-hmm. the way that they, the way that they did it. Um, they were a little too gratuitous and a little too then they lingered too much on the fact that they were gratuitous yeah. trying to trying to kind of let you know that this is not your master chief right mm. this is not the master chief it's definitely not so for me it felt a little more it, it it felt like game game of thrones it felt like gears of war and that's not what halo is so yeah, exactly. i wasn't i wasn't too crazy about that um but hey it is what it is it's a choice that you know the filmmakers the the showrunners wanted to make whatever um there i what i the reason it's hard for me to to do this because you know i i'm kind of like you jose mm-hmm. i'm not fully invested in in halo i'm kind of like exactly where you were where i kind of stopped at halo 3 mm-hmm. and i played some of the multiplayer aspects of some of the other games mm-hmm. Um, I haven't read the books, which apparently the show heavily leans from. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes a lot of aspects from the books. Okay. Uh, AJ can speak to that a lot also, and probably Gabe as well. Um, I found the dialogue to be a little clunky. It wasn't as... And, and that's why I kind of gave it a meh, because, you know, as great as the actors, and I love Pablo Schreiber... Um, it still felt like the dialogue wasn't fluent. You know, it was kind of like, okay, we're going to drop this here. We're going to drop this here. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the fluidity that you, you normally have with some of the better shows, you know, mm-hmm. that we've seen kind of like the expanse kind of like even the Mandalorian, you know, that these are, those shows have dialogue that flow very easily. It's you, you actually feel that the characters know what they're talking about. In this one, it's kind of like, well, we have to reference this, so let's put this in there, regardless of whether it flows with the dialogue, right? We have to talk about this, let's put that in there. You know, it has to flow with yeah, the Yeah, I think that, that that's going to end up speaking to, to, I think, one of the biggest flaws that the show already kind of has with its yeah, audience. Yeah, so, so that that was a little bit of, of some of the things that I had gripes with. Um, I didn't have as much of a big uh gripe with yes. the main thing that happens in the show and we can talk about that later once we get into what, more what of that did stuff. you like is there anything else that you liked is it or is it is, uh, are we yeah. really just going straight into the negative with this one no 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 because i there were things that i liked i liked i liked the it, you could tell they said that this was 20 million dollars an episode it shows on on 
on screen, right? What? I thought it was, the CGI was a little off yeah. though. Like, yeah, but, CGI like, like, like it look, it look, looks cool but, and it looks like expensive, but it doesn't look real. Um, I was a little well, yeah, that, look like that twenty is million dollars worth of CGI. That is yeah. true. I, I will I will grant you that. That is true. But it it didn't look as bad as it could have been. The aliens you know look saying? decent though. This this it's like the environments and the, and space look weird and the ships look weird, but the aliens don't look right. that bad. I felt yeah. Like and I think that's that's what I'm. That's more important <laughs> for me. You know that. You make sure that the aliens don't look like they're they're taken straight from the video game and dropped into the show. You know, they did put some effort into making the elite look like the elite. You know, now you can have you can have um, an issue with the changes that they made to the elite. I know AJ had some, but you know, overall, I thought it was okay. I think the positive that I would say is that I think that they've taken. It's not a straight adaptation of the video game, which I think would have been a horrible decision to do. Um, I think it is it is a good way to introduce Master Chief and the Halo universe to the masses. I think the underlying culture of Halo fans are not going to like it because they do different things with the character. But I, I think it's an interesting start, and I'm going to give it a chance much the same way that I gave Boba Fett a chance. I think I want to see a little bit more to what they do with the show before I, I kind of, you know, um, assassinate it from behind, yeah. kind of like the way they do in, in Halo multiplayer. So um, that's my thoughts on that. AJ, you were a Yamei. Do you have any positives? Or do I, do I have the only like possibly other things that well, I liked about it? <laughs> I don't agree with the gratuit. Well, okay. Mm. So Halos 1, 2, and 3, they were not really gratuitous with violence. 4, uh, 5, <laughs> and maybe... No, I wouldn't say infinite, but four, mm -hmm. you start to see a little bit more of the, hey, let's use a knife to take out an elite, and it'll be nice and cool. Mm -hmm. So there is some gratuitousness when it comes to it, but not like Heads seeing... Arms cut off. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. Nah. No, you know what? Never mind. You never really see that in the games. Um but I like that. I, I like that change, though, because it gives you it shows that it's not like, oh, we're just going to go pew, 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 and they're done. Yeah, I mean, war is ugly and they got to reflect that. Exactly. Maybe, maybe the exploding heads are a bit much, but like I can't re you can't yeah. really expect anything different from like the energy swords. You know, like it's going to do some damage, right? Like those things kill you in one shot oh, in the course. game. So like maybe maybe like certain things are a little bit overrepresented in terms of violence. What, oh what? my god. Yeah, yeah. The plasma pistol yeah. got the magnum treatment. <laughs> <laughs> the plasma pistol is not supposed to be that strong where it can completely take an elite's head head off. <laughs> Maybe the developers will, will buff will buff it down a little will nerf it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. was crazy uh, to see. I mean, it's not supposed to do any actual like flesh damage. It's meant to like, you know, bring down the shields and you know, that's it. Yeah, for the most part. You know what I mean? So, like, exploding a head is very out of... Anyway, 343, apparently, you know, they... they, they I don't want to say that they know what they're doing, but, you know, it is their, it is their property, so... <laughs> All right. Yeah. What else? What else? Anything the one else? thing I liked the most, and then I'll cut it off here, um, I like what they do with the Prophet of Mercy. Okay. Because at least it seems to me mm -hmm. like... But the 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 one literal human in the covenant, the other two prophets don't know about. It seems that way. Okay. Yeah. And Mercy, he's generally to to quote Eli, he's not that guy. He's not that guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like Mercy is um at least as far as past portrayals and like you know the books and like even the games he's very pro truth he's kind of like truth's lapdog in a sense but it looks like he's
kind of trying to strike out and do something on his own. At least that's what it seems to me. And I find that interesting. Right. The only person who never really respected not only the other prophets, but Truth himself, who, let's be honest, is the actual leader of the covenant, not all three of them, mm -hmm. is regret. But it's nice to see that he has trouble on all sides this time, which I think will make his the way he decides things going forward very interesting because he was already desperate in the games. Now we might see an even more desperate prophet of truth, which is kind of scary mm -hmm. when you think about it. Okay. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any other positives or shall I name my last positives? And then we'll Can get I into the mez and the negatives. I have one quick thing. Yeah. Um, I do like the portrayal of the UNSC here. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, it's it seems at least that it is more real world than 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 usual. You know, I, I like the fact that you know there there is some sort of politics in here, mm -hmm. um, and that they paint out the UNSC, which makes sense. You know, it's a big universe, right? Mm -hmm. That there's a lot of misinformation going on with with this stuff, and you know, some of it might be true, and some of it might be might not be. And I think it lends itself well to the story that I believe they're trying to tell. You know, okay, so that's interesting for me. Okay, um, I mean, yeah, I don't, I didn't really see any. I'm, I don't want to echo anybody, but I'm just going to say, like, you know, the violence is probably one of the only positives in this episode. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm going to just leave it at that. You want a bloody that's mess. Well. Yeah, that's it. It's Gabe, so, any positives for you? I'm trying to think very, very hard <laughs> on this. I don't think that there are any. <clears throat> I don't. I don't want to say that there's no positives. Is but, is the end credits just, the positive? Yeah, just give us one. Anything. Well, yeah, I've been trying to think. Fight choreography. To, you know, like uh, one I particular think, character. Well, I mean, I think. Look, I think that the action is is good. I thought the action was good. I think Pablo Schreiber is good. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think there. I think there's there's a lot of really good aspects to it. It's just that like I wouldn't have called this. I mean, not that I wouldn't have called this Halo, but mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't have called him Master Chief. I think that like. You know, if 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 this was just Halo introducing a new Spartan and stuff like that, yes. kind of like the Mandalorian, and, and you know, without the one one seven, this would have been this would have been a hundred times better because mm -hmm. now there wouldn't be the expectations, not just the expectations, but you know, there wouldn't be at least some sort of semblance to the actual character that we've been you know playing for twenty years. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that he's so different basically makes him not master chief from the games at all okay so then why am i i almost see i almost feel like i'm watching a fraud wearing the 117 okay you know and that's how i feel about that aspect of it generally i think that that's what it is you know all right i'll so name as far I'll as name, positives i don't i don't really know i'll name my other semi positives and i i, I want to actually maybe lead us into some mess by talking about that and and how i feel about that um i think like to your point that you made, Walt, that there's not much dialogue that's pretty good. I thought that the beginning of the episode, the action was okay. The dialogue was terrible. Uh, I thought the end of the episode, a lot of the dialogue was terrible. A lot of the acting was great. Uh, I thought the middle of the episode was the strongest part. A lot of the parts with the doctor were not bad. Uh, a lot of the political parts, like you said, were not too bad. Some of the UNSC interactions were a little clunky. Some of them were good. I thought the interaction with Quan Ha between her and like that that officer with the holographic interaction was not yes. bad. I thought that was a pretty good interaction, a, a solid scene, something that I, I, something that I wasn't expecting in terms of like character development from Halo. So I, uh, from this show necessarily, I thought it would be a little bit more cheesy, more corny to quote Eli. And, and there were some moments like that. I thought some moments in the middle also between Master Chief and, and Quan Ha were good. I thought by the end it got a little off the rails and a little terrible. Yeah, with their there, there were moments. Right? There were moments in the show. There were moments in the show. Yeah, there were definitely moments. I think. Um, I think the design of the Spartans is cool. I think like the you know the the let's say the set design, the costume design, except uh, you know excusing the somewhat wonky CGI in moments is really good in the show. I think that that's you know really really cool. The production design of the action scenes in terms of explosions and all that, all that's pretty cool as well. And I, I would say that that's 
generally most of what I would say is positive. Now to Wolfie's point, um, I liked some of the interactions between Master Chief and Quan Ha, but again, for the millionth time, this is like, I know is this the going. freaking Mandalorian all over again? Is it going to have to be another dude who like wears a helmet, who's like kind of gray in his morality, who meets the one person in the universe that he decides he has to save in order to become the catalyst for yet another story just like all the others. Like I said, the interactions were not bad, but we're yeah. doing this again. We're doing yeah, this again. I it's funny because when when we were watching it and I saw what was going on, I mentioned to the kids, "Oh, we're looking at another bad batch here." Except the 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 person is a little bit older. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, you know, can can we stop doing that storyline? Oh, I hated it. I hated yeah, it. We, we I have that too much right now. You know. <laughs> okay. God. Sorry. My hope. My yeah. hope. My That's hope. how you really feel. What? My hope is that Quan Ha really doesn't last long. Good. That's you know, absolutely. I, that's that's. She's she's basically I, I, the new stand-in for Cortana. I guarantee it. Well, mm, for no, now that's maybe. That's not. Watch. No. Watch. But Cortana is going to be in the show at some point. They yeah, mentioned I think she's going to be in the like show that. for sure. But the I I feel like Quan Ha is not long for the show. I I don't know why, but I I have that sense that well, she's just there to kind of start his journey, but. You know, eventually, um, she's gonna get off no. somehow. I that's she's, again, a, I could be, be totally wrong because, like I said, it's just a weird feeling that I have. She's gonna okay, but no, 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 there's she's a very good reason for that. It's because you don't hear much about the insurrection after the events of the Halo. Okay. She's gonna be the. <laughs> there you go. She's gonna be the annoying character to bring everybody together. That's basically her that. whole entire I purpose. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that either. You know, my biggest issue is that they basically turned. The UNSC into the Empire, the evil Empire. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the biggest things I understand that there are there are those aspects, but I have a really hard time believing that in the first episode where you introduce Master Chief, you know the 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 the, the, the holier than thou so, super soldier that everyone looks up to in the UNSC specifically. Okay, that on command, the entire military is just going to point their guns on him with no question. Yeah. Well, he has an established. Well, he has a propaganda reputation. He doesn't have the Halos one, two, and three reputation. But he still has a reputation, nonetheless. <sighs> I guess. I mean, but that's the other thing too that they kind of like turn like you know like that. That's what I was telling Walt before, like privately, is that the thing. The, one of the other biggest things that I hate about the 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 show of Master Chief is that Master Chief in the game has always represented hope. You know. He's always represented the fact that when he comes in, no matter how bleak the outlook, this is the guy that's going to save the day. This is but the guy maybe, that's going to rally the troops just by him showing up. You know, but maybe this, this is, is the journey guy's, to get him that. Yeah, this is to what get I'm saying. This, I, is, this I is think that guy's that's, origin story. Yeah, I think this is a deconstruction For of Master or Chief to, to get him to the place. It, it, you know, it feels like it kind of feels like um, uh. Snyder's Superman, Man, the deconstruction Steve. of Superman to get him to the gold, you know, the the choir boy that we've we know and love so, of Superman. Uh, I think that's injustice. where they're trying to do with this is like, you know, Master Chief is right now technically a government assassin, right? That's technically mm -hmm. what it is. That they they framed him that way. It's Hawkeye. And so now, you know, he has the break with the UNSC. And we're going, this is now his journey to get to the Master Chief that we, that the hope, the, ma the Master Chief of Hope. And that's why, you know, when I saw this episode, I said, okay, I'm going to go on this ride with you guys because I'm hoping <laughs> that we, that's what happens with this show. Is right. This is a deconstruction of Master Chief to get him to the character that we know and love. And then from there, we can continue to tell more stories in this halo universe yeah but i think that that's like a huge disservice to all the fans that have been waiting for 20 years to see this because why de deconstruct the one character that we've been waiting and pining for to see on screen just for the sake of well, making him more relatable though. it's storytelling you I know i understand it, that it's we, storytelling but they're, they're they're deconstructing him by telling the same story that we've been seeing in star wars for the last three years as if they did they, they, that, you know that I mean? is like, true I, like you know. and 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 i and 
just and I understand that it's storytelling, but it's storytelling in a new medium for Halo, right? In Superman, the main reason they deconstruct the Superman is because we've seen Superman in film so many times, the exact same way that, for example, um, uh, Spider Man, the latest inter- iteration of Spider Man, was ki- his lore was kind of deconstructed because we've mm-hmm. already seen his you know origin story so often already. Halo, this is the very first time that we see him on film. Why would you not give the fans what they fell because, in love with? And, in and the first I think place? I was having a conversation with my uh, with my nephew about this uh, yesterday, um, and I I think. The, the problem that, that we're having here is that we're looking at Halo strictly from a fan's perspective. And you know what? The studio has a, a larger view here because you know what? You are now trying... Fans already know who Master Chief is. Fans already mm-hmm. know his story. Fans are... Mm-hmm. They're looking to expand beyond that. And so in, in my view, that's why there's so much backlash in terms of the fans. But if you look at the overall picture, a lot of people are like, oh, this is interesting. Whoa. Because you are now, as as iconic as Halo and Master Chief is, it's iconic only to the video game community. I mean, it does bleed sure, into some okay. other things. So now this is Paramount Pluses. This is 343s. This is Microsoft's attempt mm-hmm. to kind of extend past that and say, listen, People who don't know Halo, there's a lot of buzz about this. Watch our show because we're going to show you Master Chief and we're going to show you his progression. If you already have Master Chief as where at where the fans already know him to be, the general public will be like, well, how did he get there? You know what I'm saying? This is kind of like their attempt to say, you know what? Maybe, maybe this not. was Master Chief. <laughs> we're going to get to that place, but there's a journey that we need to take to get there. And maybe not for the no. non fan. Maybe this is their way of introducing Master Chief to get to that culturally iconic place, right? But the you know? problem that I have with that is that you're doing it at the uh, you know, you know, with uh, what's the, what's the term that I want to that I want to use? You know, at the um, at the expense of the fans. You know, because sure, I understand that you want to widen the community, but then if you destroy the character that you that the fans, you know, are f- fell in love with, then, then, then you're doing a disservice to the fans themselves because you wouldn't have a show without the fans. It's the exact same thing that happened with Boba Fett. The exact same thing. You well, know, Boba Fett. I, I, I think I still to this day think they didn't know what to do with Boba Fett as a character. You know, I, I think it, with Boba Fett there was this this rush to you know what please the fans and say we're bringing him back from the dead. We just don't know what story to tell for him, and I right. think that was what the they, what they should have done with Boba Fett was just do the Mandalorian and not create Din Djarin, right? Right. But that's that's a perfect example where you kind of cater toward the fans and not know what to do with the character, you know. So you, you the fans got their what they wanted in Boba Fett, but what did you do with him? Nothing. No, 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 no. no. See, right? that's the thing. I, I think so, we should so get, I want to ask AJ. Where, I do want to ask AJ about this because AJ is the uh, like you know. I think yeah, I think he's, he, he's like I think the, he has more Halo lore than, than than I do. But this is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like if if the Mandalorian was really Boba Fett and not Din Djarin, and everyone right. fell in love with it, then you can tell the story. You know that you could tell the Boba Fett story and keep him cool, never show his uh, mm-hmm. never show his face. No, all I that agree stuff, with that. Which I is all Boba that. Fett lore and still pull in people that don't know anything about Star Wars. You know, they could have done the same thing with Halo. Give me the Master Chief that I, you know, grew up playing, but then give me a story that still pulls everyone else in. That's my issue. You know, and they okay. didn't. Yeah. AJ. I, I, okay. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. AJ, please go ahead. Because we need to hear his perspective because I think he is, out of all of us here, the the superb Halo expert, you know? Yeah, see, here's the thing, though. I actually trend towards what Walt is saying. And the only reason why is that... No, you see, here's the thing. If this was a canonical story, then they are nine kinds of wrong yeah mm-hmm. but this is not this is a completely fresh start and a arguably completely different master chief we're looking at yeah it definitely if is. this were 
the Master Chief we really know, then I would be outraged. But the fact that they're trying to at least widen their viewership, I can understand it. And one of the things, well, maybe you didn't have to do it in the very first episode, but I can, it's very weird. I, I, I was not, I, I, it's, it's odd because the, the one thing that fans have always like gravitated towards with the Master Chief is that he was always a mystery. Who's the man behind the mask? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they show the man behind the mask. Episode. I'm surprised they did it in the first episode. I, yeah. And, and it's funny because I, I told the kids that this was going to happen. And literally, like, what, five minutes afterwards, whoop, the, head, the helmet comes off. I was surprised, and, too. And, yeah, I thought this was going to happen later on during the series. But see, I think that they're trying to make Master Chief easier to connect with. Yes. But they're trying to old. humanize him. He was always can I, can about I, the games. Though. Yes, but that's the problem. This is not the game. Can I just, AJ? We're, We're not, trying but, to no, expand no, no. the audience. But the games are, are a good example it's the of source humanizing material. a character that doesn't need to have his face shown. You don't need to have the face shown to humanize him. So let me ask you this, though. What is, what is with the Mandalorian, they set out very specific rules as to why supposedly the Mandalorian is not supposed to take okay, off his wait, helmet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Have they ever done that in Halo? Huh? Is there no. is there an no, actual wait, reason hold on, hold on. why there's two he can't take his helmet there's, off? There's there's a difference between Mandalorian and Halo. Of course, yeah, of course. Because Halo has a long history of him not taking off his helmet. You can't but, just drop well, a bombshell but like that. Why is that? Here's is the there, thing. Is there but why, why does there have to be a two? It's, just the, it's just the game thing. It's not necessarily right. no reason but, for but it. But that's, I think that's the, the case. You're playing the character in a game. It makes sense that he always has to have the helmet on because there is no point where he's so, not fighting. I understand. Oh, there has I understand to, I, I'm sure that if we showed. If there was ever a point in Halo where he, they showed him kind of relaxing, the helmet will come off. No, I I understand that, but why I I don't see the purpose of even putting Master Chief in the in in the show in the first place because it screwed up so many things. There are so many other Spartans that you could work with, not Master Chief. And now that they put in Master Chief, now we have all these things like you know him taking off the mask and etc. So it's just. It's, I don't know, AJ. stupid as hell. AJ that wants is to jump in here. technically wrong. Okay, what good. Is, is this is why, he this is why has taken to off the mask before. They never just never, never showed, showed his face. Yeah. Okay, so, but then again. There's no, but is, like you said, is, there's no it, real part reason. part of the magic. That's yeah, that's, that's, like, that's the that, only that, thing, though. There, there doesn't have to be a reason. There doesn't have to be a, a why he keeps it on. You know, the, the the reason that you don't show it to the audience is to have that air of mystery for the audience, not a, you know, factual, reasonable, real life reason that he doesn't take it off. But it's more for the experience of viewing and experiencing Master Chief, you know, okay. um, I want to it's you know, you don't have to have a reason, you know, you just you just don't do it, you know. Yeah, um, I wanted to interject, actually, somebody made the point about how there's this. uh this Superman, the Superman mythology, right? Like, uh, I think somebody talked about that a, a couple of minutes ago. And there's a connect here in terms of how they're trying to make Master Chief relatable because in the games, he kind of is Superman. That's part of what his charm is in the games. He's this super lucky, unstoppable, unbeatable, can't be killed He's a force tank. in the games. Like, no matter what they do, he gets what? Like, stranded in space for like years right like he's like floating in space at one point after halo yeah. 3 is it for years yeah. and he like he doesn't die right so he falls to earth like with no equipment but his yeah. suit <laughs> right so he's kind of like he is superman in the games so uh, you know, i'm not making i'm not saying this is a good thing i'm kind of just mm-hmm. trying to like explain it in the term same terms that walter is where it's like this is what they're trying to do with it because right. you know, at, well, I, I agree they did it too soon. Like taking off the helmet, if they were going to do that, I don't know if they should do it at the end of the season, like every dang cliche show we've also seen before. <laughs> but maybe sometime in the middle of a season, for some reason, 
but yeah, like it's kind of like trying to connect him from that Superman mythology, I think, that he has in the games. And I'm not saying it's a good thing. Like I said, I understand why, why right. you know, Wolfie would not be a huge fan of it. Um, but, but I also see it. Walt's point and AJ's point where it's like, I kind of get why they're doing it as well. But it, but it's also funny because there was there was some significance with him taking off the helmet at the time that he did because that was really the point where he started to question everything that the UNSC was doing, and you know he he stopped becoming the master chief of the UNSC that was just a straight assassin that questioned nothing that just did whatever, and it 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 almost felt like the helmet was kind of like a relief valve for him as a character where it's like all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I don't have to be this master chief yeah. that the UNSC wants me to be. I can now be the master chief that I believe I have to be. And that's why I keep thinking that this yeah. is, this is the start of our journey with master chief to we'll get see. to that, we'll see. that Still doesn't character of hope. I, you know what, what I, mean? what I said when I met Pablo Schreiber, like the end of the episode, the acting was great because Pablo Schreiber yeah. was awesome in that moment. But like, yeah, it still felt forced and soon it like it was too soon. It I think, did, I think but, Wolfie and AJ wanted to make a point also. Do you want to yeah. go ahead? AJ, here's, quick? here's the thing though. Yeah. You do it way too early. Yeah. Fine. If this becomes a regular thing, yeah. Then I will definitely have a problem with that. And that is kind of like the point of no return for me. Mm-hmm. Like you can only stretch this so far. You should be like, you know what would have been a better way to do it? If they really wanted to like <laughs> do this whole connection thing while also sort of pleasing the fans, show instances where his helmet is off, but you're not focusing on his face. Yeah. That's how they like did it. Have in the game. Cut, yeah. yeah, that's exactly. how they did, it in, the game. That's how they did it, in the, it in the intro for the show. But, it's, it's, it, but it doesn't matter anymore because they've already completely destroyed the mystique yeah. of it. You yeah, know? exactly. I think that would have been. Had, it's just. Oh God. I don't care what reason why he needed to take off the mask for the for the plot and the for the and for the story of the show. It still doesn't excuse them though. Can I That's say? Can I say one more thing about? Uh, I got super Mass Effect vibes also from when he touched that that artifact. Well, you, you know they did reference Mass Effect, did, like literally. Did they? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't hear that. There, there the is a point. Yeah, there is a point where um, they mentioned uh, he's on the uh, he's on the bridge or whatever, and they they're in the background. You hear Commander Shepard. And they talk about the Skrillian Peninsula, which is oh, yeah. the very first level of the Mass Effect game. Yeah, the Skrillian so, Verge or something. Yeah, or like some, that. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh wow! So cool, cool, cool. Mass Effect, and I, I said it right it, instantly when it happened. I you know, told AJ, I was like, they just referenced Mass, um, Mass Effect in this game. You know, in the, the show, the only Easter egg I want is to see the Normandy in a battle or something like that at some point. Hey, it could happen in the show. But anyway, I'll, I'll move on. I'll let somebody else go. <laughs> But okay, so that's another meh, I guess, for the show. The, the mass of all of our opinions. Touching the touching the well the helmet the and, and, and Master Chief's like representation. I feel like like we should give like Wolfie, you look like you're ready to explode. I feel like we should give you <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean I, like I am, but I also don't want to turn this into like No, a, no, no. I think I think we're because yeah. we're we're starting to wind this down and I don't have anything else that's great or or meh necessarily yeah, to say. Let's, I can get into the nasty. I can get into that. Let's nasty. go into the I just see you fidgeting over there in a way I've never seen before. You look like you're like you're like you're hunched a little look, bit. The it's thing like, is like, like, like head, there's face. a lot of the stuff that I hated and, and let's and, head you know. into the seventh level of hell right yeah. now. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take that. Let's take that walk down. All right, you know what? Enough. Like, let me send you the message because I, so I couldn't. I couldn't really contain myself, um, <laughs> and and I'm even having trouble like formulating my thoughts. But I sent Walter a message. You know, not you know, Jose. You didn't see this. You didn't see the episode yet, and I just I couldn't wait to vent. <laughs> basically, okay. I sent this message to uh, to Walt. And I was like, the most fundamental aspect of Master Chief is that they gave hope when all was lost. Unbelievable hope for victory in battle, saving of, saving humanity and being able to do what no one else can, alone. And that feeling from hope with Master Chief is gone. You know, the original Master, you know, real Master Chief never doubted anything, always had a positive outlook, spoke with actions, not words. This one speaks way too much, having the Boba Fett treatment. Um, and didn't walk and talk like he was annoyed at being around people. You know, I felt like 
even in this in this episode when even when he's going uh, going about saving the day like even with the other spartans around him he's walking around like he's like annoyed that they're around him you know he, i never got that vibe i i i know there was a point where one of the one of the spartans questioned his command yeah you know and i, I know i i know that he got annoyed at that right yeah, yeah. and now, there was there was a, a kind of a definite sense of detachment with the refugee, you know, the, yeah. the survivor, like Quan, like Quan was literally, she literally got run over by an elite <laughs> and he just looked at her and he was like, eh, yeah, I don't know if I should, I should take her or not, you know? So there was definitely that, you know, he was, it was, he was never, I, he, I never saw him in the games as a commander of men. I, you know, saw him again as, as, as a lone ranger, he gets inserted when, when everything's going to crap. You know, I feel like that's what the Spartans generally do. But he e- even within the Spartans, you know, you never see him as like platoon leader or the commander and stuff, you know. Um, so I didn't necessarily like that aspect. Now, granted, I guess like, uh, you know, with with the face reveal and him being. Um, actually, no, I was going to say like him being uh, like like having the division between him and the UNSC, the Spartans are going to follow him. You know, they're actually they're they're kind of like the new covenant in in, in the the new yeah the new uh, what is it covert the new covert mm-hmm. you know they're like Mandalorians that have like separated and now they gotta like go run and hide and this okay. is the way I hope it doesn't well this is, well this is, you know what it is this is the bad batch if the bad batch was just one person in a bad batch and everybody else was after him sort of but like the, 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 you know the Spartans are following him as you as you saw at the end right but, um. Were they? Well, not following him. Yeah, they, Halsey yeah. ordered them to to protect bring him it back, but, but no it, matter what. Yeah, yeah, right, but right, again, right. It, it, it's it's not a matter of loyalty; it's a matter of following orders. You know, and and there's a big difference yeah. in that. Yeah, you know. So you know, yeah, they're following him and they're protecting him, but it's because Halsey has an agenda. They're following, it's not because they're they're doing it because they love Master Chief. I was gonna say they're I following think, her more so, and there's right, exactly. Yeah, they're kind of planting this idea that she might be like slightly evil or something like that. Like she might be, yeah, that's unethical, uh, maybe in, in the way that she created them. She's a very controversial character in Halo lore. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't know enough about her to say much, but like she is. That, is that yeah. Master? That's not Master Chief's origin, though, right? It seems like they took him like like a freaking Mandalorian that, or somebody. That actually no, that is. Yeah, is yeah. It, that's all yeah. Spartans yeah. origin yeah, all, story. Yeah. they're basically clone troopers. I didn't yeah. know that part. See, is that yeah. in the later games, or did they just not remember that? Um, that was they kind of reference it in like. Halo's what possibly three because Cortana has that opening line where she talks about oh I was looking at all these other Spartans getting trained blah 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 Um, but it never really gets expanded on until you get to stuff like Halo Legends Mm -hmm. and of course the books okay okay so that's why I guess I don't understand quite as much about that but okay so I guess I understand why that was in there but but yeah. I mean, the the other basically, when it comes to the uh, direction of the story, for me, the biggest issue that I have is that they are base. It seems like they're basing the storyline on on the worst received video game, you know, entry of Halo, Halo Five. I don't think so. Um, if anything, not, not, not exactly, not exactly inspired by it. I feel you know the whole like yeah. you know like Master Chief is running and then Spartans got to go save him. Okay, and there's, well, you know, like yeah. Like that was that that game almost brought down the entire franchise. Yeah, it it did. <laughs> so it's like, hey, we're gonna spend two hundred million dollars on a uh, adaptation. Let's go ahead and use the one game that all the fans hated. Yeah, but it doesn't like, make I sense. Think... Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus Christ! But I think like what they're really going for, and what kind of caught my eye is that they uh, it looks like they're following, albeit super duper loosely. Um, the Halo Reach storyline. Yeah, they sense. are. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, Halo Reach is Halo Reach was cool with the other Spartans um, and all that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like Reach. and yeah, kind of like the fall of Reach also because that's actually the first time you ever see, at least to my knowledge, that's the first time you see Master Chief leading a group of Spartans. 
Fall which was Reach. actually called Blue Team. Yes. So mm-hmm. Fall of Reach was the book. Yeah. The Fall of Reach right? was yeah. the book. Mm-hmm. Reach was the game. Right. What aspects of five uh, do you, did you think that they were trying to adapt into this story? Do you feel like they're trying to adapt? Doesn't five have some conflict with the Spartan? Also, I, I didn't play it, but they did not include Locke, and I'm so yeah, happy they didn't. They didn't. Lock, yeah. That's the that's um, the Spartan they has a conflict with in five. The one, yeah, but they might though. They might because the thing is that we we got we got an A wall, you know, John one one seven. They oh. might like be like, hey, like you know, we're gonna we need we need you to go get them for us you know what i mean yeah yeah so they, but might, they, might, they might they might they might introduce Locke and be like hey man this the the, the spartan crew they're not doing the job we need you to go over there and take command i, I think really the do only that. reason why they won't do that is because at least supposedly at this time it was really hard to make spartans without Catherine halsey by the time you get to halo 4 it's clearly very easy <laughs> yeah um right. yeah so i don't think that lock will be coming anytime well, that, soon that, thank that, god that's the other thing too that like i i actually did not if this is supposed to be the origin of the spartans i actually did not necessarily like that there's already a platoon of spartans i i think it would have been cool if it was just master chief and he's this experimental spartan and stuff like that before there's a whole team of spartans it's supposed to not be easy to create spartans he wasn't the only one though no no i know that he wasn't i just think that they should have shown him as as you know just himself the only issue that i might have with that is that If if you create Spartans afterwards, you're technically saying that they should be superior to the original one, and and that's not supposed to be the case. You know what I'm saying? Master Chief is supposed to be, you know, the singular Spartan, so to speak. You know, and these other Spartans are kind of faking it until they make it. You know, um, they have that Halsey clone, right? One of the Spartans. Yeah, I was I was I was gonna ask about that. I was like, what is that? Is that, is that a thing in Halo cloning? Yes, so yeah. Yeah. it's actually interesting in Halo Legends. Um, mm-hmm. There's an animated short where, again, they're going into the, like the Spartan program, and one of the things Halsey, who I believe is working at Oni, who is actually the very shadowy, unethical organization that kind of works with or is within the UNSC, mm-hmm. what they did was they kidnapped these children from like a very young age and they put clones in their place so that way no one would even know they were Uh, gone that's super shady man yeah yeah wait why do that why not just like use the clones for their evil purposes instead of replacing them with real the real i think they I think they prefer homegrown. So that that kind of leans into the whole UNSC is kind of shady. Yeah, but and, see, and, here's the know, thing. It, it kind of works. It's more in Legends, yeah. like what, what y'all are saying. Less in the games, right? More in Legends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, the UNSC has always been kind of shady because we're going to go to the books again. There's a whole conflict between the insurrectionists and the UNSC, mm-hmm. where basically it follows a very similar thing to the Expanse. We want these worlds to be ours because we're the ones that colonize them. Mm-hmm. No, you have to ship these resources back to us. What are you doing? We're actually going to fight you for it. <laughs> hey, AJ, to your point, and that's really the whole insurrectionist yeah. bit. That that they they did kind of feel like belters, right? The the insurrectionists <laughs> in in this from especially when you see the trailer for the second episode. Yeah, he literally a, said that. I, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was screaming Beltaloda, Beltaloda, <laughs> you know, Beltaloda, um, Wolfie. You still got to see that show, buddy. Trust. Yeah. If you want to see some but, good sci-fi to help you feel better about this, yeah, but, I, I, yeah. I, I I know. Anyway, just, let me let me ask you two questions that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel about Miranda Keys and the revelation that she, her mom is oh, uh, Holly? And second, uh, we really need to talk about the human in the covenant. I, I think that's something that we're kind of missing, and that's something that I think a lot of people were super upset about when they heard about it the first time. Okay, you know. So, I'm sorry. I'm kind of taking up the thing here but i no, i kind of you're, you're, to... you're our halo resident uh, expert resident expert genius yeah. i think that whole thing with 
Halsey being Keys' mom was a little bit too far. Because, like... Way too far. Technically... Yeah, that came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, it's like, that was just kind of a... I am your father, Lord. <laughs> that's not in the canon at all, right? That you, that, uh, as you know of, that you know of. No, 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 okay. no. Okay, that that is obviously for some dramatic shock value. Is that something you yeah. kind of hated about it? That was that? I did not. That did not sit well with me. Okay, that's I need like to see where it, the universe, right? Yeah, I need to see where they yeah. do with it. I know what they're probably gonna do with it, but right now I'm. I'm not going to give that the same benefit of the doubt as I did with the mask because that was much. So where do you think this is going? Because I have no idea, to be honest. Well, uh, well, we could probably save that for the end. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but, and then the other thing, um, Human in the Covenant. Yes. This is, I was... There was this one time I was taking Eli through a crash course on the yeah. prophet of truth. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't work. So, like, the whole thing with the covenant, obviously they have their religion called the great journey, right? Is basically everyone gets to go to heaven when they activate the halo rings and let its cleansing fire spread across the galaxy. Everyone becomes gods. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. <laughs> this is, again, drawing from the books. Truth, before he became the prophet of truth, was um, working with the prophet of mercy before he became the prophet of mercy. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he was also with the prophet of regret before he became the prophet of regret. You know the dreadnought in the middle of high charity? Mm -hmm. That's where they get most of their forerunner intel yeah. from. Yeah. Okay. When they saw, well, first of all, there was a monitor inside that dreadnought, and when they activated it, because they have their own translation of the Forerunner language, it becomes very awkward when the one thing in their alphabet called reclamation is actually translated to reclaimer. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That kind of means that, um, you know that uh, everyone goes to heaven thing we sold you on? That doesn't exist. Because technically only one race gets to go to heaven. And that's the kind of thing that would shatter the covenant. Now, so add on to the again. fact, yeah, add on to the fact that humans turn out to be the ones that can activate foreigner tech. The prophets are obviously going to be like, yeah, um, genocide. Yeah. And so they're going to try to limit human interactions as much as possible so that this secret doesn't get out. So let me let me ask you this, then, because the, what you just said is, is kind of very interesting. And I can kind of see why they chose to have a, a human in the covenant. Um, and it. It's, it kind of goes to where we're watching a show called Vikings, right? And there's a character in that who is a, a Catholic priest, Athelstan, right? And the main character of the show is Ragnar Lothbrok. He's the leader of the Vikings. And the Vikings obviously do not believe in the Christian, you know, faith, right? But Ragnar recognizes that in order for him to understand his enemy, getting into and raiding into England, he chooses to keep Athelstan with him instead of killing him, which is what normally they would do, because he knows that he has valuable information that will help him. I look at this now, especially with the way you mentioned that. Um, what, what's that guy? The the prophet of mercy. 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 He's kind of looking at this human as, as saying, you know what? I know we're supposed to wipe out the humans, but we kind of need them in order to, you know, access all of this stuff that we're trying to get to. And at the same time, you know, I can learn from the enemy in this way. So it kind of makes sense story-wise, now that you mention it that way, that there's a reason why that one person is there and another reason why that prophet is trying to hide her from everybody because he's gaining truth and it would kind of make sense that 
he would probably want to use that truth not only to help do what needs to be done, but kind of bolster his standing within the prophet hierarchy, right? In yeah. a sense. And that's why I think what they're doing with Mercy is interesting because he's normally not that guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so it kind of makes sense a little bit now having that human, but does that still but make the it only right? thing I, I, that's the thing though. If someone finds out that's big trouble for them. And sure, they're not above assassinating their own. They do it all the time. But, like, that's a very, very risky click. But is, it is an interesting dynamic to throw into the covenant, I, I, I would imagine, right? I mean, what yeah. do you guys think? I don't know. I don't know. The only thing, too, is that, like, they only showed such a small part of the the, the covenant that, like, it's hard for me to extrapolate what will happen in the entire like you know moving forward um with just this one scene you know um because should be told like truth truth can you know see through mercy's um yeah he probably could. you know he probably could and and then just like you know take over right from there and this then third you know and mercy may never have the chance to actually you know show that he is that guy you know what i mean mm-hmm. but like we don't know we we haven't seen enough at all yet so it's only been one episode so it's hard it's hard for me to see exactly where the story is going and the potential of the story i just don't like where it started you know uh, th- I, I will say that the one of the one of the main aspects that i like with the story is that they um are you know showing us the the, the forerunners uh lore and story and stuff but that's that's kind of again another issue that i have is just that like i feel like they want to tell the origins of halo but then they also want to you know fast forward us with elements from later in the games i feel like it's just you know too mushed together you know like as far as like the story elements either i would rather see you know elements from early halo days or i would want to see elements from later halo days not an amalgamation of both yeah. you know i think that the perfect halo story should have been odst at least to start i think they, if they had not. done odst as a story i think odst is one of the best halo games ever it so. is i really enjoyed odst i agree with that hmm. so but All yeah right. so one one other thing that i want to bring out and um again this was part of a conversation i had with my nephew yesterday um, he felt that Halo, the series, should not have included Master Chief at all. Yes. Yeah, that's how I yes. feel too. You know, that's yes. how I feel too. And you know, I, I was strongly against that. You know, and he he made the case that you know what, if you're going to do Master Chief, you shouldn't be doing him this way. Um, yes. And and there's enough stories in the Halo universe to tell, kind of like Star Wars, right? That you don't have to bring in Master Chief to tell it. Yes. And and you know I. It's accurate. Like yes. I said, and I told him, I said, I said, that is true. But again, I go back to the whole thing is like, you want to try and, you know, bring out if you're, if your goal is to raise halo stature past the video game community into the, the larger community, you know, I, I think um, master chief is kind of essential because you need that one guy for people to kind of like pin their, 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 fandom too right which is why this um, show to me is literally just an advertisement for the game nothing else you think it is yeah i don't i don't see any reason i don't think so that. the game's successful so. enough on its own i don't agree with yeah that. And, and the, game the showrunners did on. say right up front that they're not even looking at the games you know, I don't know. so I don't know. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Do, do you think that the decision of putting Master Chief front and center in the Halo series was a good one or a bad one? Well, Hard. here's it's the It's a bad thing. one if you're going to do it this way. How about that? Yes. <laughs> well, would have been interesting since they kind of very clearly want to start before the fall of Reach. Maybe you could kind of, you could have started with Noble Team and then eased your way into Master Chief. That would have been an interesting way to do it. I mean, I think that if they were going to do like a, a Halo universe 
TV series, yeah, you could have started with like anything. You could have started with like you know ODST, ODST team, that's the, too the far Noble in. team. That's too you far. Could, in. You could start with what I'm saying is that you could start with any like kind of aspect of 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 Halo Fire Squads, um, and then at the end introduce Master Chief, and then like have like a separate like Master Chief you know related show i just mm. i just i just hate that like we don't have the master chief from the games like i i'm not saying that you can't tell a new story but don't change the character for me otherwise don't don't give me that name you know it's it's just it's like it's the same feeling again going back to to star wars i hate that we keep referencing this but it's the same exact thing as like you know boba fett right like they don't know what to, they didn't know what to do with boba fett because they changed the character fundamentally and it it doesn't seem like boba fett and we're all like searching for like the moment that boba fett is boba fett well they just did and and i think that that was a big issue they basically just did that with with, with you know with master chief i think that the show would have been a 10 out of 10 had this not been master chief because yes. then you wouldn't have yeah. you wouldn't have everything else that's associated with Master Chief, yeah. you know, and all the expectations, you know. I mean, I can kind of see where you're coming from, but I don't know. Master Chief like, does not need to be the center of everything. Okay, but if you're trying to introduce the Halo universe, starting with its main character is kind of a good place to start. Yeah. But, but well, you, you can, can't you can't change that now. It's already done. I mean, I. I going and referencing back to Star Wars and and this is the argument that I made to my nephew is like Star Wars would not have been Star Wars if you started out with no Luke Skywalker and no Darth Vader. I mean those are the things those were the draws to the Star Wars universe. If mm-hmm. you told the Star Wars story without those two characters, I guarantee you Star Wars would not be as big as it is right now. Mm-hmm. You could have and, and so and so to reference what Eli says, where you, Master Chief doesn't have to be the center of everything, that's true, but you have to start with him first because now we're at the point in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker doesn't have to be the center of everything. Now you've gotten the fans invested in that property so much that now you can go and tell those stories. Right. I don't, you know, absolutely. I don't. But see, that's a that's but that's the thing. You have to start, you know, at the source. If 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 we have to have Master Chief, there's no question about it. I don't think we have think. to start with him though. I think I, I agree that you can you can I don't say you I'm don't think you have to like push him out of the show for like a whole season or anything like that. But you can have a few episodes. Well, to your point, like some of the political stuff was interesting. Some of the UNSC stuff mm-hmm. was interesting. Some of the stuff with the Spartans and the scientists and all of that stuff is interesting. You can have a few episodes of that to build out the lore more. And then maybe you could have introduced a Master Chief that was closer to what fans like Wolfie wanted uh, to kind of maybe that, get that a little bit get. of both worlds. Then you introduce more fans by introducing stuff outside of this Superman character we know in the games. And then you introduce a Superman as a central but not main character. The I mean, because Halo is the main character kind of of the games, right? Master Chief is, but like the Halo always makes its appearance. You can yeah, build so much around like it's, it's all Master Chief, but you, you could have even had a couple of episodes of creating a little more of that Halo lore instead of just that one hint that we get in the but, first. But see, and the, and Wolfie, the just, Wolfie just Wolfie just hit it on Maybe, the head. Right? It's all about it's all about Master Chief, right? You, it is. you wouldn't play the video game if it wasn't about Master Chief. So why would you do a series without Master Chief it is, if exactly. it's all about Master but Chief? But a few episodes, you know a few episodes without the character wouldn't be acceptable to kind of build the world. No, exactly. I, that that is, how did that work cool. out for Boba Fett? No, 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 but but yeah, Boba Fett, there's the, that. The, Boba Fett's di- the difference with Boba Fett is that we started we started focusing on him and then we left him. But if you don't start with Master Chief and you focus yeah. on somebody else, yeah. then you bring Master Chief in. I think it's it works a little different storytelling wise. I think it could be done better in that instance. Not that Boba Fett couldn't have been done better as well. We did mm-hmm. lose him a little bit too long on those episodes. Mm-hmm. There could have been an effective mm-hmm. way to do that. Sure. But I think it's more effective when you do it that way. You you kind of you build up to the Superman, right? Like, because how cool would it be to have a reveal of him after, like, say, four episodes? There's this massive battle. You have this feeling that it's hopeless, and then your character, who's all about hope, shows up in the most dire moment that these new characters that we're getting to know are experiencing, and saves the but day. But do you would that be cool? You feel that it would be cool, but wouldn't you feel that you would lose the non fans very quickly? 
if mm. you don't introduce that superhuman guy that the show is built on well, Wolfie, Wolfie and AJ and again, speak to that. like I said Best, right so for the fan for the fans that works we can handle that. right I'm, so I, I'm, I'm looking at the bigger picture let Wolfie and AJ fans, to the biggest know? fans tell us what they think of maybe introducing Master Chief a few episodes in rather than right away well well I think that could have worked like if you had spent more time with the insurrectionists just absolutely getting crushed by the invading covenant forces. One survivor out of then, 150, they said, I think. <laughs> Ugh. Damn. That's very specific, but yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much sure I remember that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And it will also be kind of cool because it's also like a. You can also kind of make it kind of horror too. Like, oh my God, I got to hide from these. That's not another thing. The Covenant went overkill with destroying that base. Normally, they send in, like, uh, some grunt infantry and, like, jackals. No, they went full elite squads. <laughs> that was, like, the most overkill thing I'd ever seen. Maybe they thought the silly grunts wouldn't translate well with their banter. Although, they, oh. although the elites have fun banter, too, but the, the, maybe it's the voices. But, yeah, like... Do you think that that would would work kind of spending like that more time with the insurrectionists or anybody else? Or is that a complete non-starter for you, AJ? The, 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 or sorry. I'm sorry. No, AJ, are you done? Do you want to do you, Wolfie? Do you want to? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. I mean, like my, my, my thing is that like it's 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 not a matter of like, could it work? It's a matter of when would it work? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that like it would work right now because it's the first entry to the series. And now to to to. You know, speaking to the point of like what's going to draw the, the the people from outside in, it's not the fact that it's it's not the story doesn't drive you know fans away in any way in in the sense that like the video game story, right? It's not like the video mm-hmm. game story only works for people that play video games, mm-hmm. right? The story is going to still work because it's a, it's still a good story. The thing that the thing that takes people out of that space are people that are just not gamers. So the whole idea is to get people that are not gamers to fall in love with the story. Why wouldn't you tell a story that we've already fallen in love with? And that's my biggest issue. But this, then, this, to be honest with you, this, this, this show, this first episode could have been the first episode to season two or season three, where we have the conflict between, you know, Master Chief and the UNSC. But first, set that up for us. You know but, what I mean? Yeah. Because the Marvel, only people, as a matter of fact, look, for example, you guys only play the first three games, which are the most important games mm-hmm. in the entire series, right? You guys don't really know anything about the insurrection and and all this other stuff because it's only from the books. Okay, um, you know it's. I don't think that that was necessarily the right approach. You know, personally, just because it's uh, you know, if you don't know anything about the game, like, or if you don't know anything about the game or you don't know anything about the books, first time that you watch Halo. You're getting all these terms and all these things happening that you're not going to learn about unless they give you super heavy exp- exposition on background later on to explain some of this stuff. Or you go play the video games and, and read the books, you know, and I think that, mm-hmm. like, you know, starting at this point, I don't think it was the best the, the best decision. Marvel does adaptations all the time and they're never straight adaptations i mean you look at civil war civil war is nothing like the comic books but yet they found a way to make it work yeah right? but they and, but they, and stay so, close to the, they stay very close to the source material though and to the identity uh, and to the too. and to the identity of like for example iron man when we first saw iron man the first iron man they the big reveal he told everybody that he's tony stark however Tony Stark and the suit and the way that he acts, the way that he looks, the way that he talks and walks is the exact same as in the comics, no? For the most part, yeah, he is. That's what I'm saying. saying. But they they do do different things because, you know what, a big part of what what makes Tony Stark Tony Stark is his alcoholism. They yeah. never mentioned mm-hmm. that in in the movies. No, in the and second film, the second film, what they do? Well, the, yeah, a, yeah, little it's bit, for, a little it's bit. Played for laughs. It's not really played for laughs right. in the comics. That is that is something that's core right. to Tony Stark. We never see it in the show in the in the movies. Uh, and, and, and I mean, so, it, it, it it's hinted at, but I mean, again, I like the, never. The, yeah, the, I agree. With the, the, the 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 alcoholism isn't his identity either. The alcoholism is a problem that he has as a as a, as a. As a character, it's his character. It drives it's kryptonite, right? a lot of his stories, but it's, it's not his. You know? It's not. It's not what makes him Tony Stark. It's kryptonite, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's his weakness, right? That's totally. the only real besides his maybe his his hubris, but I would say that's his biggest weakness. And yeah. but you can't they'd only touch upon it like just said. because you can't go saying just because it's different from the source material that it's gonna be uh good because yeah, sure, Marvel did it right, but they're not doing it right here. That's it's it still doesn't prove no, but I'm point. just saying that you know it, there 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 are plenty of instances where you're taking you know pre existing franchises and adapting it in different ways because you know what a straight adaptation would not work. Yeah, but they're know? still screwing it up here. There's no okay. I don't I don't okay, understand. but telling the exact same story no, as the game is like I'm not saying telling tell, tell the exact same story. I'm saying tell a different story, but. It's st- it still doesn't prove any point to me because they're screwing it up here. That that's that's kind of my thing, right? Like you don't have to tell the same story, but don't yes. change the characters. You know, like yeah. don't change. I think Halsey is too, you know, uh, uh, um, too Frankenstein, you know, mad scientisty. You know, I think that Master Chief is she not is, Master though. Chief. <laughs> she is, but she's not really portrayed that until, you know, a little bit later on. The fact that this is our introduction to Halsey being that way is what kind of, you know, I don't know. Like, it just it's it's just I don't know, man. I don't know. I have I have I have some problems with the uh, the, the the characters and how they're going to be developed. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat with it with Eli that it's like you don't have to tell the same story. You could tell a good story, but just don't change. Yeah, I, th- I think characters. video game adaptations are super hard to do, and we've seen plenty of instances where it just doesn't work. You know, I, I mean, you know, what, what's the best instance that we've seen recently? I guess Sonic um, is, is Sonic one of the one of the Sonic was the decent, okay yeah. ones, yeah, right? But generally, video game adaptations are usually trash. Oh, Mortal trash. Kombat. Oh, my you know? God. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, I think, but I think, I think I it's think, because think, they try to stray too far away from the source material. Every, almost yeah. every single video game adaptation be, is, is too far from the source material, which is why they don't do well. I mean, Sonic and, isn't and I, from the source material, though. There's no human world in Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> like, it depends. I think it really depends. It depends on what the source material is like, because some video game adaptations just don't translate well to certain mediums yeah Mm -hmm. right and that's the thing i think and i think that that's what they're trying to do with halo maybe to kind of sum things up that's what they're trying to do they're trying to adapt it to this television medium and we're all kind of in disagreement as to how well they did that and what aspects that they changed were effective and what weren't kind of is what it seems to be and that seems to be what's divisive like you said at the at the jump wolfie that's like the divisive element it's like fans yeah. not liking the changes that they made to to expand it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. All right. Should we I guess we should wind this conversation down here. We did I think we did pretty well not not devolving into an angry shouting match about how terrible <laughs> Halo was. I really wanted to empty the clip, but I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to turn this into a you know. Are you are you, okay, one last mm-hmm. thing. Are, are, is there yeah. any chance for you Wolfie and Eli, that this series turns around for you guys, because I, like I said, I'm I'm very yeah. upfront. I'm gonna good go question. into this with a very open mind. It's a good, and I'm gonna, good way to I'm question it. Yeah. See how it is, but for you guys, you guys are really, really not fans of the first episode. Is there any redemption for this show for you? It, it it's tough for me because the the you know I can I can deal with everything on the show, with the exception of the character oh. i i love master chief from the games so much that i could not i can't reconcile there's no way there's no way that you can get back to there's there, there's no way that you can get back to that master chief you've already broken the glass you've already opened pandora's box and that's the biggest issue you know like i don't see you know paulo schreiber you know you know, displaying a Master Chief that is going to, you know, seem not not maybe not maybe not be more more hopeful. I think that he'll probably get there for sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, that's mm-hmm. going to be the, uh, the 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 hero's turn and everything. Um, but just the way that he sounds, the way that he talks, his you know all that stuff, all these things. I just you know it just doesn't feel like you know. 117 and i don't and then and then taking the helmet off now shows me that it's not 
one one seven because we've never seen that before. You know what I mean? It's I, I just don't I don't see how it can be redeemed from a Master Chief as a character standpoint. I mean, I'm sure that I can enjoy the show because, like yep. I said, if this wasn't if this wasn't John one one seven, if this was some other Master Chief or some other, you know, again, if this was Din Djarin, so, quote unquote, you know, so to speak, the 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 you know Boba Fett, mm-hmm. but not really Boba Fett. I think the show would, I like I said, I think I would have given it a 10 out of 10, you know, if it just wasn't, you know, Master Chief. Okay. That's a Eli? very interesting point to end it on. But Eli, please go ahead. I said it before and I'll say it again. This show is not going to turn out well. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's it's just another bad batch, really. And I can't see them them going anywhere interesting with this show as of how they've set it up. There's eight episodes We've gone through one of them, so I mean it's a pretty short season, I would sort of say. And we have a, a confirmed second season. Coming oh, out really? Already. Yeah, it's, it's already been it's like already uh, done. So, yeah. Yeah. so we're, wait, wait, we're, twenty million on each episode again? Probably, probably more. Probably what it is. Yeah, probably more if season two it comes out as Damn. popular. That's an L on Paramount. Maybe less Whatever. if it's not. <laughs> well, Paramount did get the highest. Um, highest ratings for a show ever interesting on, well, the, yeah. on their platform so there's that they, have decent shows. they better it, it'll be interest. Shows. it'll be interesting to see if some of that viewership falls off in the next coming weeks i guarantee you know? it they had better get so. their best viewership if they have character the reason reno 911 humming the halo theme mm-hmm. paying, paying there's the a reason money. why there's a reason why viewership was so you're talking about you're talking about for this episode right yes right it's because that's how many people have been waiting for this and then you're just yeah. not going to give them what they were looking for. Okay. So overall, Halo is a lost cause for me. All right. I don't want to okay. say lost cause yet, but I agree with you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll end this one. We'll uh, end this one in a hopeless place. To quote Rihanna, I think. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's end her there. That's our conversation uh, about Halo, the television series on Paramount Plus. We're divided on it. We know you all are as well, all the fans out there. Um, So thanks for joining us on this conversation. We hope you enjoyed it. The best way to support your favorite podcast, Cruise, because we're doing crossovers today. We got everybody here today, is to check out the Cross Gen Podcast and the Get Geek Podcast and Talon's 55 Studios on all your favorite social media. Uh, You can hashtag us. You can search us on the Instagrams, on the Facebooks, and all the social medias of the world. And please, to support your favorite podcast, Cruise, uh, check us out on all your favorite podcast platforms and rate us on Apple Podcasts to let people know how much you love these conversations we've been having. Uh, I guess there's nothing left to say this week other than the usual. Gentlemen, please, and all our friends out there, friends, stay geeky. Wait, wait, wait. This is a cross tank Oh, so... Ended out with the cross gen. Sign off. Also. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you? Oh, guys, you guys are going to do this again? They are energy swords. Clash again. Oh, that (laughs) sort of works. Actually, that does work. That does work. They are energy swords. Clash again. All right. Peace out, people. Peace.